Okay, so here we are using the search engine we don't use too much. This is uh, what you call it, Bing, the Bing, um, the, the Bing search engine. Because the other day, I think yesterday, we were on the MSN, and we signed in. MSN came on, and they had this sun and moon kind of glyph, you know, pictures of the sun and the moon talking about some events which were supposed to happen. And when I looked at it, you know, of course, it looked very kind of prophetic and stuff like that. So this is this is today's news. They already had updated this automatically. So sometimes when you see things, if you want to get it, look at that three flags. You understand what's behind that three flag? Go back to our ancient ancestors, an ancient Kemet and Echopia, the three pendants, the three flags, symbol of God. You know, it's a symbol of God. This is at Dover Air Force Base. So they understand these kind of symbologies right there. When well, you know how to read things, you're able to read it. So this is today's news. So we missed it, right? At least we missed capturing it to show it to you as we had saw it from last night, yesterday. So what we did decide to do was go to like MSN Sun and Moon News because it was, we read it briefly, what they briefly showed, but we was thinking about it. You know those things you think about and after you think about it a little bit more, you're you're a little more curious about it. So we scroll down here to sun and moon kind of news and see if we could find it. Is it anywhere right here? Then we notice a couple of interesting things that seem to be fairly recent. Like that is like 17 hours ago that was posted. It says lunar eclipse to occur Saturday morning. It says fortunately. For tired Utah residents, the Earth will be passing directly between the sun and the moon for nearly an hour, giving Utah residents a nice window to catch the eclipse. It's neat to see the moon be red as opposed to its, I guess, the the white and the whitish appearance. So we're not going to click on that right now just to get some of these top ones right here. And now look at this right here. This is a total lunar eclipse visible in Colorado early Saturday morning. Here it says the moon's darkened face will have a reddish glow from sunlight passing through um, dust in Earth's atmosphere. A total lunar eclipse occurs when Earth moves in, moves between the sun and the moon and only happens during a full all right, and then this is another one. Jupiter's pull on Earth. You understand, talking about what's going on with um, Jupiter Jupiter and the Earth. It says, like a fast spinning lump of clay, Earth bulges at the equator. Moon and sun pull on our bulging belt line, making our planet wobble. Earth does not circle the sun perfectly straight up and down, but at a slant. You know, just giving some more data about this. So here, this is another one, partial sun eclipse on Friday. Partial eclipses occur when a fraction of the moon obscures the sun, and to those in its shadow, a bite seems to have been taken out of the solar face. And then they say the the longest duration of Friday's eclipse, and it's talking about some of the technicals. So this is what's partially expected. But that uh, that clip on um, MSN was kind of a little bit dramatic. But like we said, we don't have it. We have the clips itself, the, the pictures, but we don't have how they had set up the news. But check this out right here. I think this may be is the article right here where it says, this lunar eclipse will include an impossible site. So this was on the MSN, MSN News. It says 14 hours ago, which is roughly the right time frame for when we had first saw it, posted. It says, the little used name for this effect is a selenelion, selenelion, selenelion or selenahelion, selenahelion, and occurs when both the sun and the eclipse moon can be seen at the same time. 
So this is what they say that the lunar eclipse will include an impossible sight. But wait, how is that possible? So before we go into that particular article, that was the actual article that we saw um, posted earlier from MSN. Then we have here, this was the second article, I think next to the MSN. Yeah, that's MSN. But they said five minutes ago, they said solar storms sandblast moon surface, that they are violent solar storms can blast a surprisingly large amount of material off of the face of the moon, according to new NASA study. Researchers use computer animations to examine all that, all right? And there's, they said a new Islamic year. We know there's big changes going on also on the earth, you understand? And this is some of the sky watches uh news um over the past uh, i guess past such and such time Saturn moon may have alerts so forth and so on so you can see it's only a couple a couple of them posted um pretty pretty what's this by angel Gabriel what they say right here um much like the moon reflects the sun, so his mother reflects the sun for this doctrine. But it basically boils down to a greeting by a divine messenger, Archangel Gabriel. He calls Mary by the title of sorts full of grace. First football play you learn, I guess, the Hail Mary. They say that's the first. So that's some something they're talking about the sun and the moon right there. But let's look at this 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 um so-called impossible. This is supposed to be an impossible sight. Impossible sight when both the sun and the moon can be seen at the same time. So let's click on this and hopefully it doesn't take too long to, to load in. My machine here, sometimes it takes a moment. But this impossible sight. So this is for Friday, Saturday. And, of course, it's one of those occurrences that would make a lot of um, speculators, Bible speculators, and others say, hey, this is a sign, this, this, this is what's going on, you know, we're coming to the end, get right with God, so forth and so on. And there might be more to that that is actually accurate and true, but this is just another coinciding event, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Because how often does a uh, Selene Leon or Selene Helion? How often does this so-called impossible sight occurs, as well as the sandstorms? The sandstorms blasting the moon's surface was something that I think that was a secondary. So it was like sun and moon. That was the main thing that we're going to see signs in the sun and signs in the moon. And now this is very biblical, very prophetic. And since this is a rare or impossible sight, it's important for us to also, um, you know, for us to note this as well, you know, to, to be a witness to this. Even, even um, though sun and moon are 180 degrees apart, interesting, you might see them simultaneously. So even though the sun and the moon are 180 degrees apart, they're saying that there's a possibility that ones might see the, see the sun and the moon simultaneously. They say this year's second total lunar eclipse on Saturday morning will offer a rare chance to see a strange celestial Sight, traditionally thought impossible. So this was traditionally thought probably mainly by the Europeans and their scientific philosophy schools as being um, impossible. But we probably will find that our ancient Egyptians and ancient Ethiopian uh, astronomers and astrologers probably knew and probably even predicted when this would happen in the connection with the true new age, but ringside seats for the lunar eclipse can be can be found in Alaska, northwestern Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Central and Eastern Asia. 
over the contiguous uh, uh, United States and Canada, the eastern zones will see either only the initial per numeral stages before moonset or nothing at all. So this is a this is this is a global uh, this this is a heavenly sign that's going to be seen in in different ways in many parts of the globe. It goes on to say right here that over the central regions of the United States, the moon will set as it becomes progressively immersed in the Earth's umbral shadow. The Rocky Mountain states and the prairie provinces will see the moon set in total eclipse, while out west the moon will start to emerge from the shadow as it sets. Now remember, this is going to happen around around Shabbat, around around the Shabbat coming up. This is this is Shabbat time as well coming up. So just make that note of it as well. The moon passes through the southern part of the Earth's shadow with totally with a totality beginning at 6:06 a.m. Uh, PT Pacific time and lasting 51 minutes. For most places in the United States and Canada, there will be a chance to observe an unusual effect, one that celestial geometry seems to dictate can't happen. You remember we were saying that they've been saying that a lot of things so-called uh, can't happen? In other words, the Eurocentric, the Europeans, the, you know, this is a breakdown of their entire system, even the scientific philosophies. The little used name for this effect is a selenelion, a selenelion or a selenhelion, and occurs when both the sun and the eclipse moon can be seen at the same time, at the same time. Now, when we look at some of the ancient occultic artwork, if we look at some of the uh, occultic kind of artwork and even in, in some of the early Christian Gnostic and early Christian artwork, even some of the Ethiopic Midrash like the, like the Malika Raguel, it actually shows on some pages where you see on one side you see the moon and on the other side you see the sun in one, in one scene. So we're coming to a time when this, which was thought not to be able to happen, and many have gone on the record, stake their careers that that's an impossibility, but this impossible, what does this section says? Seeing the impossible. Seeing the impossible says, but wait, how is this possible? When we have a lunar eclipse, the sun, earth, and moon are in a geometrically straight line in space with the earth in the middle. So if the sun is above the horizon, the moon must be below the horizon and completely out of sight or vice versa. That's the traditional, the traditional uh, world view. So we're seeing new or seemingly new things, even things that they've gone on the record said that could not, would not, never can happen. And indeed, during a lunar eclipse, the sun and the moon are exactly 180 degrees apart in the sky, in the heavens. So we're seeing strange signs in the heavens. So in a perfect alignment like this, remember this word that we repeated a lot? Some of y'all who have been following the line of Judah ministry, we've, we've wrote on this and reasoned on this word, syzygy. In syzygy. So in a perfect alignment like this, which is called and known as a syzygy, a syzygy, such an observation would seem impossible. Such, such a syzygistic observation would seem impossible, but it is atmospheric refraction that makes a selenelion, a selenelion possible. Got to get used to this word, huh? Atmospheric refraction causes astro astronomical objects to appear higher in the sky than they are in reality. Oh, really? Okay, for example, when you see the sun sitting on the horizon, it is not really there. It is not there, really. It is not there, really. 
It's actually below the edge of the horizon, but our atmosphere acts like a lens and bends the sun's image just above the horizon, allowing us to see it. This effect actually lengthens the amount of daylight for several minutes or more each day. And see, around that time is really when Shabbat is when it was when the Shabbat time begins. And this effect is actually what the ancients would, would look for and would actually signal that the evening has come and Shabbat time has come as well. And so since this is happening, this particular impossible site during the lunar eclipse is happening on Friday evening into Saturday or into the Shabbat, into the Saturday. It says, this effect actually lengthens the amount of daylight for several minutes or more each day. We end up seeing the sun for a few minutes in the morning before it has actually risen. And for a few extra minutes in the evening after it actually already has set. The same holds true with the moon as well. As a consequence of this, what they call it, an atmospheric trick, for many localities there will be an unusual chance, an unusual chance. What's the likelihood that all these things are happening now to observe a senelion? Now they say senelion, a senelion. They're spelling it even different right here. Senelions. They have like a couple of different spellings of it, but you notice in one of the spellings it's like um, Helio, Heliopolis, which reminds of ancient Egypt. Anyway, to observe a Senelion, and lion is in it too, lion, Senelion firsthand, with Saturday morning's shadowy event, Saturday the Shabbat's shadowy event. There will be a short window of roughly one to six minutes, depending on your location, when you may be able to simultaneously spot the sun rising in the east-south-east and the eclipse full moon setting in the west-northwest, east-south-east, west-northwest. Hmm. Regions of visibility, the regions of visibility right here. Now, region of visibility for places to the east of the Appalachian Range, this will unfortunately be a non-event. So we over here in this part, it's not going to be an event. Although the moon will still be above the horizon when it begins to enter the Earth's shadow at 6.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, it initially is the penumbral shadow that first contacts the moon. This shadow is so faint that at least three-quarters of the moon's diameter must be immersed within it before you would have a chance of detecting it visually, either with your naked eyes or using an optical aid. That means if you live in places like Boston, here we go, New York or Miami, the moon will look perfectly normal as it sets. <laughs> That's interesting, too, when you think about it, you know? You know, fire there, most, most, but still them think a cool breeze, yeah? But from southeast Ontario through the Ohio Valley and continuing south to the central Gulf Coast, the upper left portion of the moon will begin appearing somewhat darker or smudged as it begins to disappear beyond the horizon. As you head farther west, the moon's entry into the much darker part of the Earth's shadow or the umbra, like I guess an umbrella, will become evident at 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time or 6.45 a.m. Central. So then they give you, you know, they give you this chart over here of, of, of when, when, and what's what supposedly is supposed to happen. But it's a little more of this because I think this is, a, uh, this is an important event. And perhaps this is, this is one of the, those sort of events that even our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, spoke of in the canonical Gospels. Across portions of the upper Midwest, the nation's heartland, down into the central parts of Oklahoma, 
and Texas, about half of the setting moon will be immersed in the umbra. The shadow will appear to be creeping, will appear to be creeping almost straight down across the moon's face from its upper limb. Across the central and southern plains, only the lowermost portion of the moon will remain in view as it moves down below the south, the west-southwest horizon, farther west and north, across the desert southwest and high plains. The moon will rise completely immersed in the earth's shadow, while for parts of the inter-mountain region, northern California and Pacific Northwest, the moon will begin to emerge from its umbra as it sets. Important facts to consider. Okay, what are some of the important facts about this event that they say we should consider? In order to observe the selenium, the selenium, selenium, you should make sure that both your east, south, east, and west-northwest horizons are free of any tall obstructions that might block your views of the setting moon or rising sun. So I guess that's out for those of us on, on the eastern seaboard, huh? Also, keep in mind, depending on the clarity of your sky, the clarity of your heavens, you might actually lose sight of the moon about 10 or 15 minutes before sunrise thanks to the brightening morning twilight, the brightening morning twilight and the moon sinking into any horizon haze, or they call it atmospheric uh, schmutz, Yiddish word, Yiddish word, Yiddish word, atmospheric schmutz, so we can tell, well, who's behind these speculations. But anyway, keep in mind that this holds only for the uneclipsed portion of the moon. Indeed, if the moon is totally eclipsed at moon set, you will probably have to scan the western horizon as the twilight increases in order to detect the moon, which will perhaps resemble a dim and airy illuminated softball. A dim and airy illuminated softball. If you take a photo or video of the eclipse that you'd like to share with space.com for a possible story or gallery, please email Tariq Malik and Clara Moskowitz. And that's their article right there about this particular event. And we thought this was particularly interesting to, um, you know, to share this particular event about this lunar eclipse will include an impossible site coming up this Friday to Saturday for most others, others except those of us here on the eastern, eastern seaboard. So this is one to keep our, our proverbial uh, heads, heads up and our, our, hearts, our hearts firmly grounded. All right, so look forward to it and, 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 and share anything on this if you can. All right, so shalom, rasta, sari, and, and um, keep the Shabbat, you understand? Keep the Shabbat, the Senbet holy. This is just another sign.